From the Tribune News Network, this is Newsbreak. I'm Krishna Russell. As COVID-19 vaccines continue in the country, a senior health official has assured the public that all who've received a first dose are guaranteed the second jab. Dr. Mersaline Dal Regis, head of the National COVID-19 Consultative Committee, said yesterday officials are securing the numbers needed to supply second doses. She also gave an update on the COVAX shipment. She said, quote, we are committed to the second dose. We will have sufficient vaccines. In terms of the arrival of the second shipment of COVAX, it is promised in May, but we will work around the dates. But until it is landed, we cannot plan how it is going to be used. We have had so many shifting goalposts with the arrival of vaccines that we really have to plan what we have. The vaccine committee will pause the rollout on Saturday for evaluation purposes, simply to assess supplies for first doses, second doses, mobile distribution, and distribution in the family islands. A Pan American Health Organization official has said there will be a short period of limited access to the Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine due to shipment and manufacturing issues. The Bahamas has administered over 15,000 doses of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine so far. The country first received 20,000 doses as a gift from the Indian government, and then another 33,600 doses through the PAHO-generated COVAX program. Between both sources, some 53,600 doses have been received into the country since March. Dr. Jarbas Barbosa, Assistant Director PAHO, made the announcement during the organization's weekly COVID-19 webinar update, but assured the public that there will be some access to the vaccine up to May. Two strangers united in grief yesterday while testifying about the fate of their spouses during a coroner's court inquest into the presumed deaths of people reported missing after Hurricane Dorian. Jason Farkason said he searched seven days for his wife before learning that storm surges destroyed her house balcony and plunged her into the sea. Tervilla St. Till, meanwhile, broke down in tears and said she walked among dead bodies in the pigeon peas before finding the lifeless body of her husband, Emmanuel St. Till. Nineteen months after the monster storms, struck Abaco and Grand Bahama. The long-awaited inquest is an effort to answer questions about the circumstances surrounding the presumed deaths of at least 34 missing people and to bring some official closure to family members concerning their deaths. The union representing Water and Sewage Corporation line staff has accused the company's executives of victimization and using intimidation tactics against a senior employee who is seeking a run in the next general election. WSC senior serviceman in the Abaco district, Kirk Cornish, was placed on administrative leave without pay last month, shortly after he was ratified by the Progressive Liberal Party to represent North Abaco. In a letter dated March 23rd, obtained by the Tribune, Mr. Cornish was told his unpaid administrative leave would take effect immediately and was further advised to hand in all of the company's belongings the same day. Bahamas Utility Services and Allied Workers Union President Dwayne Woods said union members were disgusted and appalled by the actions taken by WSC executives, who he claimed were attempting to minimize the influence of the rep representative trade union. Meanwhile, in a statement last night, WSC strenuously denied victimizing Mr. Cornish and insisted its actions were entirely above board. Your complete news and information source, this is the Tribune News Network. In international news, the Biden administration on Thursday announced the U.S. is expelling 10 Russian diplomats and imposing sanctions against dozens of companies and people, holding the Kremlin accountable for interference in last year's presidential election and the cyber hacking of federal agencies. The sweeping measures are meant to punish Russia for actions that U.S. officials say cut into the core of America's democracy and to deter future acts by imposing economic costs to Moscow, including by targeting its ability to borrow money. The sanctions are certain to exacerbate tensions with Russia, which promised a retaliatory response. India's two largest cities imposed stringent restrictions on movement and one planned to use hotels and banquet halls to treat coronavirus patients as new infections in the country shot past 200,000 today amid a devastating surge that is straining a fragile health system. The soaring cases and deaths came just months after India thought it had seen the worst of the pandemic and have forced the country to delay exports of vaccines abroad. India is a major producer of COVID-19 shots and its pivot to focus on domestic Domestic demand has weighed heavily on global efforts to end the pandemic. 
The Tribune's AccuWeather update, a service of Bahamas Power and Light Company. A high-pressure ridge will continue to create pleasant weather conditions across the island chain through tonight. Beachgoers should remain vigilant due to the risk of rip currents. For all areas, it'll be partly sunny to sunny and warm, with a stray shower or two possible today, becoming mostly fair and mild tonight. Winds southeast to south at 10 to 15 knots in the northwest Bahamas, and east to southeast at 10 knots or less in the central and southeast Bahamas. Seas 2 to 4 feet over the ocean, but slightly higher in light swells along Atlantic exposed shorelines. We'll have a daytime high temperature of 82 degrees and an overnight low temperature of 66. The sun will set this afternoon at 731 and will rise tomorrow morning at 647. That's Newsbreak. Details of the day's top stories in the Tribune newspaper, now on the streets, or stay up to date online at Tribune242.com.